April is here, which means March is behind us, and as always means it's time to take a look back at the best games last month had to offer. A surprisingly bulky month in terms of the number of overall releases we had, so let's just jump in and start with some notable 1.0 launches and remasters that don't quite meet my criteria of new releases, but still deserve their fair share of recognition. Our first quality 1.0 release of the month was the drop of Patch Quest on March 2nd. The game is a mix of genres including roguelikes, metrovanias, and monster taming. In Patch Quest, players must navigate a treacherous maze filled with monsters using only their trusty lasso to capture and tame the creatures, which aid them along their journey, similar to the likes of the Pokemon series. Set in the Forgotten Jungle Labyrinth of Patch Lantis, players must hone their skills and collect power-ups to make their way through the deceptively difficult, ever-shuffling terrain. Next, we had the 1.0 release of The Last Spell on March 9th, a tactical RPG and roguelike game, set in a post-apocalyptic world. The premise of this one is a devastating magic spell has been cast by a deranged mage, destroying cities and raising the undead. As the quote-unquote commander, players lead a group of survivors and mages in a quest to cast a spell that will banish all magic from the world in an attempt to defeat the undead. And then on March 13th was the 1.0 release of Barrow Trauma, a survival horror role-playing submarine simulator, which takes place in the distant future on a submarine where players explore the dangerous waters of Jupiter's moon Europa. Players are assigned roles on the crew and must work together to survive. Additionally, some game modes allow traders to be among the crew, facilitating a suspenseful environment. And then on that very next day was the 1.0 release of Spin Rhythm XD, a rhythm game inspired by classic arcade games such as Guitar Hero and Dance Dance Revolution. The game features modern aesthetics, electronic music, and supports multiple control and play styles. The game has handmade stages across five difficulty levels and 60 licensed tracks from various artists. It also includes a level editor, customization options, plenty of accessibility features, and allows players to compete on a global leaderboard to show off their skills. And our last quality 1.0 release took place on March 22nd with Have a Nice Death, a roguelite hack and slash side scroller where players take on Death, the CEO of Death Incorporated, who must restore order after his employees, the Sorrows, cause chaos within the organization. With their trusty scythe, players explore the procedurally generated departments of Death Inc., battling bosses and upgrading weapons along the way. The game offers a nice twist where if players become too powerful, unintended consequences can occur, with one such example being rising costs of vital work items. And if you are a fan of remasters, there were two great quality releases in March. On March 1st was the official US release of The Legend of Heroes, Trails to Azure, which was originally released exclusively in Asia for the PSP. If you are a fan of the Trails series and want to get a nostalgic hit, or just love traditional JRPGs, definitely give this one a go. Then, on March 9th, Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, the 2008 horror survival game for the Nintendo Wii, saw a remastered release which has seen much praise by fans of the original installment. And with that, let's go ahead and jump on into the top 10 games you should have bought in March 2023. Starting off at number 10 is MLB The Show 23, an annually released single and multiplayer baseball simulator developed by San Diego Studio and published by Sony Interactive. New features to this year's title include storylines, a fresh new game mode that shines the spotlight on the Negro Leagues. Eight players including Jackie Robinson, Buck O'Neill, and Satchel Paige are all featured along with many other greats. Additionally, core seasons in Diamond Dynasty now lets players snag 99 overall players on day one, with new seasons launching every six to eight weeks. And one piece I find to be the coolest, two-way position players such as Shohei Otani can be used both as starting pitchers and as true designated hitters in players' lineups. I've been a huge fan of the show series since its first installment as a kid, and personally I still think it's worlds ahead of other baseball games. One thing to appreciate Sony has done is that they've opened the doors allowing the show to now be played on Xbox and through Game Pass on day one release. As someone who's been a longtime fan but hasn't had my hands on a PlayStation for quite some time, it's a huge plus for me and others like myself. Super Mega Baseball 3 only goes so far, uh, unfortunately, so hit some dingers in MLB The Show 23, available on all PlayStations, Xboxes, Switch and Game Pass. At number 9 is WWE 2K23, the 23rd overall installment of the WWE video game series, developed by Visual Concepts and published by 2K Sports. Supporting both single and multiplayer, this game features a hybrid of arcade and simulation gameplay, just like the previous installments before it. But it also includes new features like the war game mode and online multiplayer for up to 8 players in the Royal Rumble match. Players can also enjoy returning game modes like My Faction, My GM, Showcase, Universe, Career Mode, My Rise, and a full creation suite with new additions. In Showcase, players can recreate key moments in John Cena's career specifically, while My Rise offers two distinct storylines, the lock or the legacy, depending on the player's character selection. So hit your friends over the head with some steel chairs in WWE 2K23, available on all PlayStations, Xboxes, and Steam. 
Number 8. Mortal Sin, an early access single player first person action roguelike developed and published by Nikolo Todorovic. Mortal Sin is a game that takes players on an endless horror journey with intense action where death is just the beginning. Players must fight their way through a nightmare with deep and rewarding melee combat. Each hit causes devastating wounds as the player can seamlessly link attacks for fluid gameplay. The game offers a ton of replayability with procedurally generated levels and loot. Players are also allowed the opportunity to unlock special classes such as Mage, Monk, or Berserker, and over time, I presume, many more to come as this one continues in its development. Embrace Your Immortality and Mortal Sin, available on Steam in early access access with full controller support and 22 unlockable achievements. Next, at number 7, is another early access single player game in Big Ambitions, a management role playing sim developed and published by Havgard Games. In Big Ambitions, players can become a successful entrepreneur starting from scratch in New York City. With the help of their uncle, they start off with an apartment and a small job, but it's up to the players to achieve success and become the biggest tycoon in New York. Players can choose to build multiple small businesses, grow them into huge corporations, or create their own unique path in this vast business sandbox. The game offers limitless possibilities for success and includes a multitude of businesses to run, such as gift shops, supermarkets, coffee shops, law firms, clothing stores, and many more. Players can come up with even more unique ways of profiting, such as importing products via the harbor and distributing them through a network of warehouses that they own. Pretend like the $20 check your uncle sent you a few years ago for your birthday was actually a million dollars and big ambitions available in early access on Steam. Moving on to number 6, we have Contraband Police, a single player open world action game developed by Crazy Rocks and published by Playway SA. Contraband Police takes place in 1981, located in the region of Kerry Katka, tossing players into shoes of a communist border patrol agent. Players will need to keep an eye out for smugglers using UV flashlights to search for vehicles and stop any contraband from crossing the border. They must also be prepared for shootouts with drug traveling gangs and high speed police chases with desperate smugglers. As a young officer trainee, players will be in charge of post management and upgrade the station's defense. Successful inspections, foiled smuggling, and successful interventions will earn players cash to improve these stations. Additionally, the game includes special assignments such as solving crime puzzles, supporting comrades, and thwarting the Blood Fist Rebels. Take out the dirty anti-commie smuggling rats and contraband police available on Steam. Next, at number 5 is Wo Long Fallen Dynasty, a single and multiplayer historical fantasy Souls-like RPG developed by Team Ninja and published by Koei Tecmo. Despite a rough launch player's experience from the PC port and generally bad performance issues across the board, it seems the most recent patch saved Wo Long from missing my list this month. With that being said, Wo Long Fallen Dynasty is set in 184 AD during the later Han Dynasty in China, where chaos and destruction currently reigns. With the focus being on combat, players must deflect and dodge enemy attacks with melee weapons to counter opponents. While performing close range attacks, a spirit gauge will gradually fill, allowing players to unleash spirit attacks by using special moves or elemental spells. Enemies are equipped with a moral rank, indicating the difficulty of the combat encounter, with more difficult enemies dropping more valuable loot. The game also features 5 divine beasts to select from, which assist players during combat and can provide passive perks along the way. Wolong is largely linear, so battle flags are scattered throughout the world that players can use to save their game or upgrade their characters using the game's experience system. And one additional thing worth mentioning, unlike the Neo series, Wolong features a jump button which facilitates more exploration and combat of the map. So take on ancient evils in the recently patched Wolong Fallen Dynasty, available on all PlayStations, Xboxes, Steam, and Game Pass. Number 4, Bayonetta Origins, Cereza and the Lost Demon, a single player action adventure game developed by Platinum Games and published by Nintendo. The game takes place in the Avalon Forest where players follow Cereza, a young witch, as she embarks on a journey to save her imprisoned mother. Players control both Cereza and Cheshire, a demon bound to her stuffed toy using both the left and right Joy-Con controllers to control the character's movements separately. Cheshire can be toggled between two modes, Unleashed and Hug, which allow players to attack enemies and solve environmental puzzles. Additionally, Cereza uses spells to bind enemies and Cheshire's attacks to defeat them. Elemental cores are collected throughout the story, which provide upgrades to the duo, increasing their powers as the game progresses. Learn how she came to be in Bayonetta Origins, Cereza and the Lost Demon, available exclusively on the Nintendo Switch. Next at number 3 is a single player JRPG in Atelier Rise of 3, Alchemist of the End and the Secret Key. Man, is it me or are these JRPG titles just getting longer and longer over time? 
In this game, developed and published by Koei Tecmo, players will join Ryza and her friends on an adventure to uncover the secrets of a mysterious gate and the code of the universe to save their home. The game features a vast open field with multiple maps connected seamlessly, giving players the freedom to explore. With a total of 11 party members, including both familiar and new faces, players will embark on their journey with a wide range of friends. In the heart of the game, the new key system unlocks various gameplay features, including exploration, synthesis, and combat. Players will have to make good use of the keys and their unique powers to enjoy a more satisfying and smooth experience. Check out one of the better JRPGs to hit 2023 so far, and a Teeler Rise of 3, Alchemist of the End, and The Secret Key, available on all PlayStation, Switch, and Steam. Just shy of our top game of the month at number 2 is Dredge, a single player fishing exploration game developed by Black Salt Games and published by Team 17. In Dredge, players catch fish, sell their catch, upgrade their boat, and explore the depths of the ocean for long buried secrets. Starting from the remote archipelago called the Marrows, players can scour the depths for over 125 deep sea creatures and curious collectibles. Each area has its own unique inhabitants, opportunities, and secrets to discover while completing quests and visiting neighboring island regions. Players must be cautious of danger, including sharp rocks, shallow reefs, and the fog that cloaks the nighttime seas. As players unravel the mystery and dredge the depths, they can research special equipment and upgrade their boat to gain access to rare fish and valuable deep sea treasures. They can also sell their discoveries to the locals, learn more about each area, and fight the unfathomable creatures of the deep. Team 17 continues to add another solid title to their portfolio of indie titles in Dredge, available on all major consoles as well as Steam. And landing the number one spot for the month of March is Resident Evil 4, the remake to the 2005 survival horror game developed and published by Capcom. Players take control of the US agent Leon S. Kennedy, who must save Ashley Graham, the daughter of the United States president, from a mysterious cult. The remake features six control schemes, including one modeled after the original game, redesigned visuals, new character designs, and additional backgrounds to create a more intense atmosphere. The remake also features a crafting system that allows players to create items and ammunition using resources collected throughout the game. The merchant also makes a return, enabling players to buy, upgrade, and trade items, along with offering new side quests to complete during the main story. The combat in Resident Evil 4 is shooting based like the original, but now Leon can move and use weapons simultaneously. In addition, he can perform melee attacks to injure enemies and push them away. Another new feature is the parrying mechanic allowing players to block and counterattack enemies. If you love the original, you'll find that the remake has hit close to home and takes things in an even better direction than before. Resident Evil 4 is available on all PlayStations, Xbox Series X and S, and on Steam. After crying my way through Amnesia Rebirth, I made a vow never to play another horror game, and I don't think Resident Evil 4 is going to break that, unfortunately. But I will say, looking ahead to April, if you consider Dead Island 2, which is releasing on April 21st, to be a horror game, then I guess you could consider that breaking that vow. And another big title dropping at the end of April on the 28th is the highly anticipated Star Wars Jedi Survivor, the sequel to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which is one of my favorite games over the past decade. So do me a favor and watch The Phantom Menace each day until its release. Until then, then, peace out, y'all.